We no longer need to measure the speed of light. We use it now as the ultimate benchmark, the ruler by which all other measurements are compared. But the journey to this standard didn't start with lasers or satellites. It began with nothing more than curious eyes, spinning wheels, eclipsing moons, and the burning desire to ask, what if the universe is slower than it looks? That's the quiet beauty of it. The speed of light isn't just a number. It's a story. A story of trial and error, of thinkers watching shadows pass across Jupiter's moons, of mistakes made and lessons learned, of mountaintop observatories and satellites drifting in Earth's orbit, all listening to the silence of the stars. In a way, light itself has become a witness to our pursuit of truth. Even the fastest thing in the known universe couldn't outrun human curiosity. It's as though light has patiently waited for us to catch up, not physically, but intellectually. And now that we've come this far, that we've met our photonic friend and walked alongside the long journey to understand its pace. A deeper question lingers in the cosmic quiet. Why does light travel at this speed and no faster? Why is it exactly 299,792,458 meters per second in a vacuum? Why not a perfectly round 300 million, or a billion, or even, why isn't it infinite? Why would nature give a massless particle like the photon such an oddly specific cap? To understand this, we need to go deeper, beyond history, beyond human perception, into the fundamental structure of the universe. Let's begin with the photon itself, a particle of light, unlike an electron or a proton, it has no mass. That's why it's allowed to travel at the speed of light in the first place. But in physics, even massless things must still obey rules. And one of those rules is this. Light always moves at the same speed in empty space. Not because it's trying to, but because the very geometry of space-time demands it. Space-time, this four-dimensional fabric woven from length, width, height, and time, isn't just a stage on which the universe plays. It's the director of the show. It dictates how objects move, how gravity works, and yes, even how fast light can travel. In Einstein's theory of special relativity, the speed of light isn't just a fast velocity. It's a cosmic constant that connects space and time. It determines how we experience distance and duration. The faster you go, the more time stretches and space contracts for you. And this stretching and shrinking are calculated relative to the speed of light. Think of it this way. If the universe were a video game, the speed of light would be part of its core code. Change it, even slightly, and the entire simulation crashes. Gravity wouldn't work. Atoms wouldn't hold together. Stars wouldn't burn the same. Life, as we know it, might not even be possible. So no, the speed of light is not random. It's not just a convenient number we stumbled upon. It's baked into the structure of reality itself. But still, why that number? Here's the twist. The number isn't as strange as it seems. It's only 299,792,458 because we measure distance in meters and time in seconds. If we use different units, say, light years and days, it would look very different. In fact, physicists often use a system where the speed of light is set to one. That's how fundamental it is. It's not about the digits. It's about the role it plays. In these natural units, time and space become two sides of the same coin. And light is the thread that stitches them together. Now let's see why can't anything go faster? Here's where things get wild. As an object with mass accelerates, it gains kinetic energy. But it also starts to gain relativistic mass. That is, from an outside observer's perspective, the faster something moves, the heavier it appears to become. The closer it gets to the speed of light, the more energy you need to push it. And if you try to reach the speed of light, you'd need infinite energy, a bottomless fuel tank, a cosmic impossibility. That's why no spaceship, no matter how advanced, can ever reach or exceed the speed of light, unless somehow 
it had no mass at all. Even light can't cheat the rules. It doesn't choose to travel at light speed. It must. It has no other option. With no mass to resist motion and nothing to slow it down, the only rest frame it knows is this universal maximum. And what if something did move faster than light? Let's entertain the idea, just for a moment. Imagine a particle traveling faster than light, something physicists once speculated about and named a tachyon. According to theory, a tachyon would never slow down. It couldn't. It would only ever go faster, possibly even backward in time. It would flip causality on its head. Events could happen out of order. Effects could occur before causes. The very foundations of logic would crumble. That's why most physicists believe tachyons don't exist. Not because we haven't seen them, but because their existence would unravel everything we know to be coherent. So light speed isn't just a limit for motion, it's a limit for meaning. A speed cap that ensures reality makes sense. That your past is behind you, your future ahead, and the arrow of time always points forward. It's almost poetic. This tiny, massless particle we call light, something we encounter every day from screen to sunbeam, is both a messenger and a guardian. It delivers color, warmth, and vision. But it also enforces the most sacred laws of physics. It says, you can go this fast, but no faster. And maybe that's enough, because within that limit lies a universe full of wonder. Stars that shine, atoms that bind, planets that orbit, and brains like yours and mine that can wonder about it all. As we close this segment from infinity beyond, take a moment to let this idea settle. The universe is not an accident. It is a carefully tuned masterpiece where even the speed of light serves a greater purpose. In our next episode, we'll venture into even stranger territory. What happens to light when it enters the warping grip of a black hole? Does it escape? Does it bend? Or does it vanish into darkness forever? We'll answer that next time.